Good afternoon from Dublin. First of all, I want to say thanks again for all the support I'm receiving. Really appreciate the likes, the shares, the comments. I'm on YouTube with Peter Dooley Dublin. I'm also on Facebook and Twitter as well. One of the big, big issues in Irish society over the past year has been the spiking and spiraling out of control refugee and migrant crisis, uh, sparked by the proxy war in Ukraine that should have been avoided if the Minsk agreements were implemented, uh, if peace and diplomacy was top of the agenda. The Irish government bowed down to the European elites, bowed down to the United States deep state and the warmongers like Joe Biden and pursued this war in Ukraine, led to a huge refugee crisis from Ukraine. Over 80,000 Ukrainians are now in Ireland. And then we've had, on top of that huge, huge crisis, find an accommodation for more people in our society. Already, so many people in Ireland are struggling. Uh, nearly a million people are at risk of poverty. One million people are on hospital waiting lists. Over 12,000 people are in emergency accommodation. Nearly 300,000 people are the so-called hidden homeless in our society. So we have a huge crisis that predated a lot of uh, the issues that have been exploded because of the uh, refugee crisis. And now we have over 502 international protection people who are trying to claim asylum, who are now sleeping on the streets. You can see the raft of tents here on Mount Street outside the offices of the International Protection Asyl Accommodation Services. This is horrific and it needs to be addressed. And the problem is, is that the political establishments have uh, fully rolled in behind what's going on. Uh, they're not listening to the genuine concerns of working class people. They're ignoring them, they're speaking down to them and they're preaching to them because it's, it's ordinary working class people that are struggling most of all. And in particular due to the lack of services, due to the housing crisis, due to the health crisis, uh, jobs and education as well. And we know most recently that there has been a huge push by Labour in the last number of years to challenge the big capital interests in terms of improved workers' rights and improved wages. This has been destroyed because of obviously the influx of migration, which is an agenda used by the neoliberal capitalists to keep wages at low levels. And uh, we've seen that now where a lot of people are being exploited. We do a lot of work through the Dublin Renters Union where we support renters. And we've seen a lot of renters, in particular migrants, being forced into overcrowded accommodation, being exploited by landlords, and then being exploited as well by big bosses in Irish society, uh, by driving their working conditions, driving their wages as well. So uh, this is an agenda used to keep wages at low levels. It's also an agenda used um, by the political establishment to claim they're humanitarian when they're actually the opposite, because if they were humanitarian, we would not have a homeless crisis in Ireland. We would not have a health disaster in Ireland. Uh, but these politicians, the political establishment, are all fully rowing in behind what's going on in Irish society, leaving people living in dreadful and horrific conditions. Most recently, there was demonstrations held in Clare about the housing of up to 69 asylum seekers in a guest house that wasn't fit for purpose. Uh, it was didn't have proper sewage, didn't have run, uh, proper hot water, um, has serious health and safety concerns. And uh, at the same time, we've seen the government ignoring the genuine concerns of ordinary working class people due to the lack of GP services, lack of public transport. This place in particular was five miles from a Ennis. I think it had two bus services running a week. Uh, absolutely disgraceful that there's a lack of consultation with communities, lack of discussion, and no integration. And it's ironic that there is a Minister for Integration, Roderick O'Gorman, who's refusing to meet local communities and discuss with local communities about their basic lack of basic services, as I said, such as GP services, housing, health services uh, as well in our society, which is all driven by the, uh, the neoliberal agenda. But what's more dangerous as well is the diktats coming down from and directives coming down from the European Union. Uh, Ireland does have an opt-out clause in this, but this hasn't been acted upon. Uh, they followed through on this temporary directive, which has now been extended, 
which has created a tiered system of refugees in Ireland where you have Ukrainian refugees who have, um, are treated um, a lot better than so many other ref class of refugees, for instance, uh, so many people living in direct provision for many years that aren't able to work and so forth as well, where a lot of uh, the Ukrainian refugees are treated differently, which is absolutely um, disgraceful, but it's driving more division in society. And we've seen recent flashpoints in this area as well, around uh, migration camps as well. And um, it's absolutely despicable that working class communities aren't being, aren't being listened to. Uh, they, they have genuine concerns and are being preached down to and spoken down to. Most recently they're looking at opening warehouses in North Dublin, uh, in the middle of industrial estates. They're doing the same in Clondalk and I think also as well. And they're opening another big centre in Dunleary, I think, that's due to open as well. But what's more stark with this is the big companies making huge profits out of this system as well. Huge, huge profits. One of the companies is a company called Tifco. Uh, Tifco are a huge conglomerate, big hotel group making huge profits. Uh, up to 80 million euro of public money was given to them last year for providing uh, accommodation. Uh, they were obviously involved as well in the mandatory hotel quarantine during the COVID period where there was horrific treatment of uh, where people were inhumanely de detained uh, in these detention centres and they made huge, huge profits during that period of time as well. Uh, other companies like Tetra Capital, a huge asset private equity firm, are making huge profits out of it. Were paid upwards, I think, nearly 30 million euro last year for the accommodation in the City West Hotel site in West Dublin, uh, which has a convention centre and a hotel as well uh, that has been used as well. Uh, a lot of these companies are making huge profits and Seamus McEnany, the ex Monaghan GA manager, uh, again is making huge profits out of this. So it's all the friends of Fine Gael, the friends of Fianna Fáil, the big corporations, the big global interests and nationally here as well, as I said, the pals of the Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil government are making huge profits out of it, which is absolutely despicable. But it demonstrates a number of factors. It demonstrates that one factor is the lack of sovereignty in terms of democracy and the lack of any involvement of people in the decision-making process. In Bunrock to the in the Irish Constitution, the Irish people should be dictating the policy of the state. And uh, that's laid down in the Irish Constitution, the people of Ireland should be dictating the policy of the state and deciding on it. Unfortunately, with these diktats and directives coming from the European Union and our Taoiseach talking about sovereignty as a backward-looking idea, uh, we know that their agenda is to erode our sovereignty and our independence and to bow down to the directives coming from the European Union. And the question needs to be asked about our continued involvement in the European Union on this uh, basis because uh, the European Union has centralised power. Um, there's a lot of unelected, unaccountable elites running the show in Europe, driving us towards this proxy war in Ukraine and uh, also driving us towards mil more militarism in, in NATO as well. And this is a bigger agenda of uh, the, what's been happening over the last four decades of neoliberalism, uh, which has privatised their services, uh, destroyed society, and forced more and more people into poverty and caused countless amounts of deaths because of their ruthless privatisation agenda and profit-seeking policies where they've commodified everything essentially in society and especially our basic needs such as having a home, having a health service and having a right to uh, decent education and job as well. So uh, these things are vital. Uh, I had a poll on my page recently that Ireland should, should they pause, press a pause button on the migration crisis. Uh, over 91% of the people said yes, they should, we should. Uh, the vast majority of people think uh, we have a huge housing homeless crisis uh, and we're trying to uh, compound it by uh, creating this uh, refugee crisis by creating uh, horrific conditions for people to live in, which is creating more division in society. People are already competing for scarce resources and uh, they're not being listened to by the political elites and the political establishment who are all rowing in behind the government's narrative, which I find remarkable, uh, which goes and flies in the uh, face of the public interest and flies in the face of basic democracy. And uh, it just demonstrates a number of factors around the lack of integration through a so-called Minister for Integration, who won't even go and meet communities that have genuine concerns, while huge businesses make huge, huge profits.
Uh, and this is what this government's agenda is. And it's disingenuous as well for many political parties who aren't standing up for peace. Immediately if people stood up for peace and an anti-war platform and said we should stop the war in Ukraine, then what should happen is uh, that would immediately address um, the compound and refugee crisis coming from Ukraine. Over 80,000 people have come from Ukraine. So uh, that would deal with, deal with that crisis, but unfortunately the Irish government are bowing down to the warmongers, are saying it's, we're going to support this war as long as it's necessary and all this sort of nonsense. Uh, rather than standing up for peace, standing up for Irish neutrality and standing up for diplomacy, uh, Ireland should be in a strong position and use our voice as strongly as possible on that basis and uh, stand up for peace, stand up for the interests of ordinary working class people in Ireland and all across the world. But unfortunately this government bows down to the big capital interests uh, have eroded our sovereignty, sold us off uh, to Europe and uh, don't stand up for the interests of ordinary working class people. So it's horrific what's going on in Irish society. There's a lot of horrific uh, systems in place uh, and you see this going on. So this is just one facet to highlight what's going on and as you can see the tents that are strewn there's around the corner there's more tents and down that street there's more tents as well. So uh, this issue needs to be addressed. Uh, it won't be addressed by the political establishment and uh, it needs to be addressed, but it demonstrates, as I said, the bigger facet of our sovereignty, the, biggest, the bigger facet of uh, our independence, and really where power lies in society and where power really should lie in a democracy, in a so-called democracy. And any idea of freedom should be down to the people to decide on the policy of the state. And that, as I said, is laid down in Bunrock and Heron and the Irish Constitution. So listen, thanks for tuning in. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, um, Peter Dooley Dublin on YouTube as well. So listen, take, thanks again and take care. Talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.